All right, so what we need to do, we are going to do the collisions between the badgers and the arrows. What we do conceptually is pretty simple. We create an invisible rectangle around the image of the badger with the exact same dimensions of the image. Uh, and then we do more or less the same thing with the arrow. And then if those two rectangles collide at all, that counts as a collision. What? What? Like hit boxes? Yeah, it is a hitbox, yeah. Um, they're not perfect, right? Um, so don't expect to be down to the pixel sliding, you know, your character in between bad guys or whatever. Um, but there is a way for you to see what the hitbox actually, where the hitbox actually is. And you can be like, oh, I need it smaller, I need it bigger, because then you can actually define the size of the hitbox. Uh, once you get this. So, what, what you, where you guys need to go is one line underneath your badger speed. Well, for me it's 114, but that's going to be way different for you. So I would uh, control find something, control F. Alright, so everyone there? I'll take the stun to silence as a yes. So we're going to do bad rec, badger rectangle or bad guy rectangle. Again, we want our variable names to be for us to know what they represent. We don't just want A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, A, J, K, L, M, N, O, P as variable names. That's real, real bad coding. Um, so bad rect equals, now we're going to do pi game. Pi game dot rect with the capital C. If you want to create custom rectangles, don't copy this, just pay attention. You can do something like this. You could put um, 100, 100, uh, 25 by 25. This is the X position, the Y position, the, the width, and the length, I think. So you can create custom rectangles wherever you want. Um, but we're, what we're going to do, you can also give it an image and the, it will say it will make a rectangle around the size of the image so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do bad guy underscore image dot get underscore rect get wrecked I do that every time so if that's annoying you if that annoys you I get used to it <laughs> so one thing I wanna sh I wanna tell you guys or I wanna ask you guys if I had different images for my character, for my bad guy, what would I need to put here? Oh. Remember, if our bad guy has their own individual unique image, does anyone know what we would have to put in here? If, if our bad guys, if each of our bad guys has their own individual image, because we append a random image, what would we need to put here? Remember, bad guy, badger, is our individual bad guy. Currently, it only has an X and a Y position, but if it also had an image, Ezra, that would that would be what you would use to choose the random image. We've already chosen it. For example, if this was Badger, so say we have our, our gopher image, and it's currently at 100, 400. What would we need to put here to make sure the gopher image gets its own rectangle? Uh, not bad guy image bracket three, it would be badger bracket two. So what it, you, what you would put here is the index of the image in your bad guy list. We obviously don't have the image in our bad guy list, so that's not what we need to do. We only have one bad guy. However, if you want multiple bad guys, you would have to put badger uh, bracket two in there and not bad guy image because you have different images. Um, 
for each badger or for each bad guy. Yes, Catherine. What that does is it creates a rectangle around the image. So whatever image you give it, it creates a rectangle with those dimensions. So now what we need to do, we've created the, bat, the rectangle. We now need to move the rectangle as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to do bad rect dot top equals and bad rect dot left equals. So while you guys are copying that down, I am going to pull up a whiteboard. Oh, sweet. I have this from the last class. Yeah. So, this is our badger, as you can see my awesome artwork. This is the image. This is the rectangle we've created. The blue is the rectangle that gets created around the image. Our top Right, the top of the rectangle has to be equal to the Y position of the badger. And our right and our left side has to be equal to the X position of the badger. Does that make sense? That's how you move it. So all this is is badger bracket. I think it's one and zero, yeah. The top is one. Badger bracket zero. So, does that make sense? Well, Catherine's shaking her head no. What well, doesn't make sense? Just the whole thing or? Okay. So, if I have this, oh, I still have my code running over here. It's a it's an x value. Or 0 is the x value, 1 is the y value. So So uh, let's go with red. So this point right here, that is the top left corner. So that right there is badger 0 badger one. Okay? Because our our bad guy, so if this is bad guys, we have an X and a Y position, and then we have X2, Y2, then we have X3, Y3. So this right here is bad guys. Does that make sense? That is our list of bad guys. Every bad guy on screen is right there. This is our first bad This is our first bad guy. First BG, second BG, third BG. Make sense? Josh? Okay. What we're doing is we're saying that for this badger Hmm, it's not creating whatever. This badger has a rectangle around it. That rectangle has to be in that rectangle has to be in the same position as this x and y. Make sense? And the way we do that is we say the top of this rectangle is the same as the y value, which never ever changes. So once it spawns, it stays in that same y. The thing that changes is the is the x. So the left side of the rectangle, the invisible rectangle, has to be the same location as the x position of our badger. So the way we do that, how do we control our x and y position of our badger? Well, all our badger is, all, every bad guy is an X and Y position, and that's it. And as we cycle through our for loop, we have four badger in 
bad guys, right? This is bad guys. So badger, every loop, is contains an X and a Y. So if we so if we say the rectangle, so if we say the rectangle dot top is equal to the badger bracket one, we're saying that the top here is the same location as the y value of our badger. And our rect dot left equals badger bracket zero, which is our x value. Tracking with me? Do you guys get that? Okay. You could, so you could do minus 10, and what would that do? Right, the rectangle would actually be uh, something like this. Actually, it wouldn't be that far. The rectangle would be something like this. Not directly over the image, it would be off a little bit. You could also make, instead of doing our bad guy underscore image dot get rect, get rect! Uh, you could have the BG, you could have it be, if this is our bad guy image, you could have the hitbox be that. You could make it smaller if you wanted to. But I think we have like two minutes. So let me get back to the code. So once you have this, the next thing we're going to do is I want to show you that rectangle. So you guys can better see it. You, do, you don't need this for your game, but it is helpful so you know where things are. So it's pygame.draw.rect screen uh, David, give me a color. Green. Green, so RGB 0, 2, 4, 5, 0. Do you guys know what RGB values are? So every color that you see is made up of one is can be made up of three different colors: red, green, and blue. Zero, zero is I have I have zero percent of that color. Two hundred and fifty-five is I have a hundred percent that color. So if you have zero. 255, 0. This stands for red, so I'm going to have 0 red. I'm going to have full green, and I'm going to have 0 blue. So we're going to see a green square, green rectangle, where our rectangle that we just created around our badger is. So that's the hitbox of our badger. You'd ha you would have to change the yeah, you could, you would, but I'm not going to. Yeah. Wouldn't you just have to take the number of pixels off the right. instead of do instead of using the image to get the rectangle, you would basically say bad rectangle is this size. Uh, so you'd, have to, like, right you'd have to mess with it a little bit. But that is the and then what we're going to do is we do the same thing with our arrows, and then we code if this rectangle collides with this rectangle delete both of them. But that is, and if you guys don't like green, and you want, it, you can't go higher than 255. You get a, you get an error. So, so you guys can mess with that. The way this works real quick, because I feel like the bell, I wish I could memorize the schedule, or I need it, I need it right there. We go to 41? Oh. Yeah, yeah. All right, well then we can keep going. So this right here, what this pygame.draw.rect, 
you can, this is drawing a rectangle. Make sense? The first, the first object, the first thing you have here is where are you drawing that object? Well, we, everything is on our screen, so it's screen. And then it's color and object. So this, it, you can you, you can, actually, I think you can. So that is a pixel, that is a box that is 100 pixels wide, or that is in, it spawns at 100, 100, and it's 50 pixels wide, 50 pixels long. It won't move because I've hard-coded these values. But what you can do is you could make this like a portal. So if you collide with it, you win or you lose. I don't know why, it's, why it blinks like that. Oh, it's because I'm in badgers. Um, so I could have that be my end screen. You could make it yellow, and if your character hits that, boom you win or something like that. Um, you could make uh, you could make a wall. It's not the most effective, but then your character has to walk around the wall. You can put a box around your character. How do you do that? You do the same thing instead of bad rect. You put player rect. Instead of bad guy image, you put player and then you change everything from bad rec to player rec, and you change this to your player position. Yes, Catherine. Say that again. Have do you have bad rec? And this variable matches that variable. These two are the same. Also, the rec, the the cat, the R in rec and pi game dot rec has to be capitalized. Okay, so I'm gonna cancel that out for now, and I'm gonna undo this. Now, what we need to do is we need for every bad guy on screen, we need to cycle through every arrow. Is this the most efficient? No. Doesn't matter. So what we're doing is we are saying, Sonny, you're a bad guy on screen. Are there any of, of the five arrows that are out there on screen, are any of them hitting you? No. Okay. Josh, for every of one of these five, is any one of them hitting you? No. And you cycle through each bad guy, then you cycle through each arrow that's currently on screen, which is why the more arrows you have on screen and the more bad guys you have on screen, the longer it takes your code to function. So we're going to go for arrow in quiver, and there may be a way to put this for loop inside of this for loop, but I haven't put time into that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do the exact same thing, but with our arrows. So why rewrite code? I'm going to copy our bad guy rectangles, and I'm going to change something real quick. Instead of bad rect, what should it be, Sonny? for creating rectangles around arrows. You could do bullets or arrows. I like arrow rect. So then I'm copying that and pasting it. Now, do we want to get the same dimensions as our bad guy image? No, so we need to change this to what? Arrow. Then what do we need to do with our location? Remember, our arrow consists of an angle, an x, and a y position.
So what do we need up here? Brendan? We need the box, we need the rectangle to follow the arrow. Right, so what do I put here? Well, look at this. Oh, X No. No. Every arrow it consists of an angle that we rotate, an X position, and a Y position. We blit the arrow at this position and we rotate the image by this. If we want the rectangle to follow the arrow, what does it have to be at? What what same value has to be what value has to be the same between blitting the arrow and our and our arrow rect? Uh, or, yeah. Say that again? X and y. Yes. So what needs to go right there? Oh, wait, two? Yes. Yes, two. So what now needs to go here? So if arrow two is our y value. Oh, one. Yes. And this is something I found out in the other class. We need to integerize this. We do not because this, so we start out with badgers at a whole number and we only subtract whole numbers from it. So it's always an integer. If you are, if you like change the speed by 25% and not a whole number, you would need to integerize these. But in our code, we don't. If you want to integerize them, feel free, but you don't have to for it to work right now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm also, I want to see where these arrows are. So I'm going to make the arrows red, and instead of bad rect, it's going to be arrow rect. Does that make sense? So now when I run this, hopefully, uh, hmm. What's wrong? Who can tell me what's wrong with this error? Who can tell me what this error is saying? Only two people are looking at the screen. Three, four, five, six. What is that telling me? Get wrecked. So, what's this error mean? That's exactly it. So I have arrow, apparently arrow for arrow in quiver. Well, it can't be arrow, so this has to be what? No, what's the image of my arrow? What's the variable? Arrow image. So now let's see if what happens when we run it. Oh, I can't spell. Arrow. Uh oh, well. That's a little weird. Okay, so that's not exactly what I want. Um, how would I get that to rotate? Well, let's just see if I can put it over the rotated image of the arrow.
Well, it's closer. So shooting at a diagonal helps as opposed to in a straight line, but that's at least a little closer. And that's actually how we're going to leave it because I don't know how to, well, not that I don't know how, but. So instead of arrow image here, you have the rotated image of the arrow, which we defined up here in our other four arrow in quiver. So it should just be arrow rot for arrow rotated. So I comment out that, and that's it. So what we'll do to what we'll do next class is we will code the collision between the two and what happens. Okay. Sweet. Um, Mr. Schulter, can you just show off your Pi game one last time? All right. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yep. All right, so let me stop this.